The best way to predict the future is to create it. A quote from Abraham Lincoln opens today's podcast. Hi, freshmen. This time we are going to dig out more on the various career alternatives that you can choose after entering the university life. Probably some of you will directly have this on mind. Wait, what? I just get the thing started and now I have to think about my career's choices? Well, now let's go back to the Abraham Lincoln's quote itself. That quote means that the way we predict our future is by creating it. In other words, even your career path will be started 4 years from now, but if you really want to get ready for it, you will need to start it from now. As the sooner, the better, right? Before we start the session, let me introduce myself first. I'm Devi, I'm from Binus at Bandung, and I will guide you to explore more about the career choices that you can take. For your information, Binus University acknowledges three career paths for our graduates. Working in a global company, being an entrepreneur, or pursuing further study. For this podcast session, we are going to exchange views on one of those, further study. Right now has been here with us our honorable guest speaker with his inspiring stories that can be insights to all of you who might already think about or even plan to continue your study to get your master or even doctoral degree later on. And our guest today is Bapak Marco S. Hermawan, the head of International Business Program, Binus Business School, and the National Undergraduate Program, Binus at Senayan. Hi, Pak Marco. It's an Hello. honor to have today's talk with you. Pleasure How are you, Baba? I'm good. How are you, Devi? I'm great, Pa. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. So let me start the session by asking you this, Pa. How long have you been working in Binus University? Um, I've been working in Binus University since 2007. So this would be my, uh, let's just say, 13 years of my career as an academic mm-hmm. and so, yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure working here and teaching here uh, in at Venus University. Impressive, Pa. So as the head of the program, what do you expect the most from your students? Is it merely on their academic achievement or is there any other thing? Um, well, I think if you uh, talk about um, the ex- ex- of students, um, I think you should see whether the students are um, capable of doing it. I mean, um, for academic, for sure, they are, um, it's their requirements to upgrade their knowledge um, in terms of their field uh, of interest, uh, uh, their study program and so forth. But I think I, I need to uh, emphasize that not only uh, students have to learn uh, in class or in this case, probably learn it online uh, via Zoom and so forth. But also they should uh, be aware that uh, the non-academic is an area that they should uh, upgrade as well, they should improve as well. Uh, for instance, I think the, the, the most or the, the, the easiest example would be how you actually uh, develop your communication skill, your soft skills, and your organizational capacity. Yeah? Um, that is another area that students need to I- improve. Um, during my graduate uh, degree, I joined a lot of um, organizations. Uh, for instance, I joined orchestra uh, organizations, uh, and also I joined uh, marching band organizations. And from those organizations, uh, I learned a lot of things. I mean, to be honest, that's the most I mean uh, uh, enjoyable moment that I had so far uh, during my undergraduate level. So I learned a lot of things that uh, 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 reflecting my uh, career uh, as an academic right now. So for instance, to communicate with people, uh, how to deal with uh, um, a group of people, and then how you actually trying to communicate in a way that people would understand your thoughts, your plan, your target, and so forth. So mm-hmm. I guess uh, these are all uh, some of the examples why you should actually have, you need to balance between the academic and the non-academic one. So, yeah. Thank you, Pa. So, of course, this will be relevant with our discussion today that is about further studies. Now, let's move to the most specific one, but What motivates you 
to further your education and pursue a master degree and even doctoral degree path? Yes, uh, I think this is quite a challenging questions. I mean, in the way that uh, uh, most of the audience uh, right now is, is a, a first year, first year to be a freshman, uh, yes, a freshman uh, to to do their uh, undergraduate level. But I think uh, the the point is, uh, whenever you start your uh, first year undergraduate level, you should start looking at yourself five years from now, or even let's just say 10 years from now. Uh, the reason is because uh, I think once you have the uh, target or, or at least a plan for yourself, what you're going to be in the next uh, future time, uh, that's where you start planning to uh, uh, develop your early career in, in, in the university life. Um, when I did my uh, undergraduate uh, level, um, uh, my bachelor degree was uh, accounting, and uh, I see myself that uh, I'm a person who is actually, you know, trying to develop my uh, analytical skills. Right? Um, basically, I like calculation. Um, and then um, uh, at that time, uh, that was back in the 90s, I suppose, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, banks or uh, multinational company that uh, requires a good accountants. So uh, I see that that's a good opportunity for me to uh, uh, apply for jobs uh, related to banking and accounting, uh, public accounting firms. Uh, but then again, uh, I see myself that uh, not only uh, looking at, th there are a lot of opportunities out there that you can uh, start applying for jobs, but also you, you see yourself that you need something that you, uh, you can gain from. So uh, I decided when I graduated in, 98, and I directly continue to my master's degree. Um, the, the, the reason why is because uh, I, well, I had a chance to go uh, to, to take my master's degree abroad in Australia, and uh, I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity for you to gain a wider perspective uh, during your master level, uh, in that a lot of your friends are actually a, 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 a working uh, executives, a uh, friend who has been working for uh, years and, and you have a lot of uh, foreign people uh, that you have, that you, you, you started to know that not, uh, uh, there's a, a lot of uh, new communication way when you are studying abroad. So I guess this is uh, uh, something that you probably need to start looking for or start planning uh, for the next five or six years. Okay, what are you going to be? Interesting point that we need to think about um, our purpose or our goal. What are we going to be, Apa? Yeah. Yes. So, since you receive a scholarship for for the studies, uh, could you please share the process? Like, how could you get the scholarship, and what became the hardest process to get it? Um, I got my scholarship when I applied for my PhD, my doctoral degree. Um, I think this is something that probably some of the uh, uh, students would look for, or probably not. Uh, but then again, it's, it, it goes back to what I said before. Uh, you need to have a plan. You need to start uh, uh, your what you're going, what what are, what you are going to do in for, for life, basically. Um, uh, during my bachelor degree, just going coming back to my uh, experience, uh, uh, technically, um, I like to teach. So uh, I joined the marching band organization and I like music basically, and I write music uh, uh, apart from I'm doing accounting as my degree. So it's like, uh, you know, having two different worlds in the same time. <laughs> um, um, thing. Right. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. And uh, the thing is that you, you, you start to see your, uh, what you are capable of during your uh, undergraduate, because I think the, the, the four years of your study at the bachelor level, at the undergraduate level, is the moment where you can uh, expose yourself. What is actually that you are capable of? What is my plus? What is my minus? What is my strength? What is my weaknesses? What if I see people? What if I see my colleagues? What if I, what if I do this and that? You know, the, 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 the exploration time during the four years is so uh, essential that you are actually trying to develop yourself and then you, you're trying to 
figure out, okay, so what, I, what I'm actually going to do when I graduate is this, 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 because I know that I'm capable of doing this and that. So uh, that's where the time where I see uh, myself that I, I actually like teaching. I like to I like to help people. I like to uh, see that uh, uh, the person who, I'm, uh, who, who I teach, who I taught is actually improving. So I, I like that kind of moment. So I think that's where uh, the, the moment start where I see myself. Hey, I'm, probably I'm a, I'm a good teacher. I'm a, uh, probably I'm, I, I like doing uh, lecturing and all that stuff. So that's where I come up uh, being as a, an academic uh, at Bims uh, University. Um, for coming back to uh, the doctoral degree program, it's actually uh, the continuation of the career itself because uh, as an academic, you need to uh, aim for the highest. Again, it's your plan, it's your target, and it's your uh, um, aims, yeah? uh, your, your, your mission to accomplish as a, as a, a fully uh, package, fully one package as an academic. So you need to pursue a, a PhD degree at some stage. Um, the challenge at that time, I think it was back in 2010 when I had to prepare my uh, uh, PhD preparations and one of the issues is that you need to be able to come up with a proposal, with a topic that uh, suits uh, or in accordance with your uh, designated supervisor. You need to find a supervisor before you find a university. Interestingly, uh, in, in, in a PhD application, you don't apply for the university. Instead, you apply for the, uh, the right supervisor that is going to help you uh, uh, design your dissertation. So... Um, it's it's a bit uh, fortunate uh, in that when I apply at uh, Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand, um, apart from I applied to any, I think I, I did, uh, I made a eight application at that time, and only one who responded, only the professor from uh, Victoria who responded, and she was mm -hmm. interested in my topic. Um, so I got accepted uh, in Victoria University, but then again, uh, I need to find a scholarship because basically uh, it's kind of difficult to uh, self-fund it for a PhD because it's a four-year or even five years uh, study. Um, at that time, um, there was an opening in FDICT uh, for the scholarship. So it, it was probably the right time for me to apply uh, because I already have my uh, acceptance letter from the university. All I need is just to lodge the applications to DICTI. Uh, at the time, it was quite a big uh, uh, fund uh, uh, for, from DICTI to give a lot of scholarship for uh, lecturers who want to uh, pursue their uh, PhDs. So, yeah, uh, I was fortunate enough that I got a place uh, at DICTI. DICTI was uh, so generous to give uh, uh, those scholarships. Um, it ended only eight months of preparations until September 2011 when uh, I start uh, moving out to uh, New Zealand for for my PhD degree uh, until I finish in 2015. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a bit of my experience. Of, of it's totally life. inspiring. So, our friends or our freshmen, they don't have to afraid or to worry about the opportunity, right? But because there are plenty of uh, scholarship opportunities provided both from the our governments or even the um, post universities, correct? Yes, uh, that's right. Um, in fact, um, from the Ministry of Education, um, there are uh, sets of uh, uh, scheme, basically, if you want to uh, pursue your uh, master's degree, perhaps, or even your PhD, if you are interested in being an academic. Um, we have LPNAP, yeah, uh, which is actually uh, a scholarship for those who are a non-academic background uh, who wish to pursue their master's degree. Um, we have a lot of uh, our private institution who gives a lot of scholarships. So I think I think the, the, the issue is whether or not you are willing enough to uh, look for information mostly on, on the internet. They provide a lot of internet uh, information uh, regarding, um, what do you call that, uh, uh, scholarship. All right. All right, thank you. So, yeah. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> and the next question will be, what needs to be prepared once uh, we know that we want to pursue further study? 
Um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. <laughs> I would rather go for mental instead of your material. Material can come later, if I may say that. Uh, mental is first because uh, once you uh, you are willing enough to go for a, a, a further study, it means that you are reducing some of your um, other things, I should say. I'm not saying happiness. <laughs> you still have to be happy when you take your master's degree anyway. Um, it's your other things. Basically, uh, you, you, you reduce your uh, hanging time with your friends. Um, what else? Uh, watching uh, drug core, Korean movie and all, all that stuff. You know, you have to study for all night long. You know, that kind of things that you really need to prepare. Um, once you know that you, uh, those consequences, then I'm sure that uh, uh, it'll be easier for you to uh, finish your study because uh, that's the thing that you have to prepare your mental, your 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 eagerness to finish that study, and then uh, uh, other things that you need to reduce. You know, uh, you, th those kind of uh, things that you have to uh, be well prepared. And yeah, I mean, material is also something that you should also prepare. I mean, if you don't get the scholarship that you required and then you have to pay by yourself or hopefully your parents still can support you with this um, but then again even your parents will say hey are you really want to continue is that what you want you know those kind of questions will they, they will ask you and then you just have to have the good answer for that okay thank you Bob. Uh, and the last but not least question what piece of advice would you give to the freshmen who plan on pursuing for their study um, what piece of advice? I mean, uh, uh, suggestion perhaps? Yes. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned that before. Uh, uh, your target, your plan, what you are going to be in the next five years' time. Um, I think the, the thing that you need to avoid, uh, I should say, is that if you want to pursue a further study, uh, do not... Uh, think of because of your parents have to do have to do so or your friends is doing so so that you are also doing the same thing uh, I think that's those are something that you should avoid because uh, if you are somehow uh, on that pathway of ikutan then I think the, the the next issue would be are you is that what is that something that you are uh, are willing for. Uh, if you don't want to do your further study, uh, then just don't, okay? Uh, because there are a lot of, like, like a millions of opportunity once you are graduated and you need to choose it wisely. You need to choose what's best for you, what's best for your life, what's best for your career. And if you are really want to pursue a further study, it's just because you want to not because you have to, or your girlfriend asks you to do it, your boyfriend asks you to do it, and those kind of things. Right? So, yeah, I think that's one of my advice. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Pak Marco. Thank you for sharing. My pleasure. Your sharing will truly groom our freshmen to picture their bigger future. And everyone, you just got the most inspiring sharing and tips from Pak Marco. Remember that you should know your goal, know your mission, and never forget to be happy. So we hope that those who already have their plans can be more inspired and motivated. Thank you to all freshmen who have listened to our session. We still have other two podcast series about exploring your career in a global company or as an entrepreneur. Don't miss it, everyone. Now, stay healthy and get excited in experiencing the whole activities in the first year program. Keep in mind that FYP, begin happy. Have a nice day to you all. We are, we are, we are.